Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this is a special episode. We got two cool carnivorous dinosaurs that we're going to be talking about today, and, so, and these dinosaurs you probably might recognize. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is Carcharodontosaurus. Now, Carcharodontosaurus in Latin means uh, shark tooth lizard, and basically fossils have been found in northern Africa, Middle Cretaceous around 100 million years ago around 40 feet long and probably between five to six tons carnivore of course and basically with Carcharodontosaurus is that it belong and of course it belongs in the family of theropod dinosaurs that is appreciably named the Carcharodontosaurids and these are the dinosaurs that are theropod dinosaurs that actually are pretty big they actually probably came from uh, they were probably descendants of allosaurs, so pretty much uh, allosaurs were pretty much their ancestors. And basically, uh, kind of, kind of like this uh, model right here of uh, Mapusaurus. Now, I'm actually going to use this Mapusaurus uh, model right here to actually show you some of the characteristics of Carcharodontosaurus. Now, the now what Carcharodontosaurus actually has is basically it has a big head, basically a big head. And also, it's got these uh, very blade-like teeth, very thin blade-like teeth, and these teeth can be pretty big. And another characteristic of Carcharodontosaurus and its relatives is basically it has really small arms for its body size. Even though they do look big, uh, but even though when you actually do compare them to a Tyrannosaurus Rex, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex does look, Tyrannosaurus do look puny in comparison to Carcharodontosaurids. But amazingly, to think, to think of it, it is this. Carcharodontosaurids never used their arms very much. I mean, they probably did use them probably uh, for like grabbing a prey that is a little bit smaller than them, like Iguanodontids. And like with Carcharodontosaurus, uh, some, of the some of the herbivorous dinosaurs that are actually around uh, in its time were gigantic sauropods, you had Uranosaurus, uh, so those are the dinosaurs that would actually have been very, very common uh, for prey uh, for Carcharodontosaurus. And if anybody, and if any of you actually saw Planet Dinosaur, the first episode actually talks about uh, the dinosaurs in Northern Africa in, base, in around 100 million to 90 million years ago. And basically, it follows basically Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. And Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus are pretty much uh, two apex predators uh, in its time. Now, the difference between the two is basically this: Spinosaurus is a specialist, whereas Carcharodontosaurus it actually has a wider range of prey it could actually go after, and so pretty much. Uh, Spinosaurus didn't really need to get outside of its territory, which is basically rivers, lakes, streams, uh, and possibly the ocean, uh, to actually uh, catch its prey. But whereas Carcharodontosaurus are more land-based, they actually had a wider range of territory, so basically they can actually uh, go after prey that Spinosaurus couldn't actually get to. So pretty much I think what we're actually seeing here is probably a relationship with Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus is that uh, Carcharodontosaurus did more of the heavy lifting, whereas Spinosaurus did the, didn't do too much to actually get to, the, to get its prey, because basically it was more of a patient hunter, whereas Carcharodontosaurus did do some patient uh, uh, hunting, basically ambush. Could actually chase down its prey. It probably could, but probably for a very short distance. But even though they do have the the bird lungs of the air sacs, basically. And of course, uh, with Carcharodontosaurus, its size is pretty much almost the same as Tyrannosaurus rex. So pretty much, if if you actually have to say which dinosaur would actually probably win in this fight, I would say Tyrannosaurus rex, considering that it's a a bit more advanced dinosaur, and also uh, Tyrannosaurus rex has a bigger brain uh, than Carcharodontosaurus. When you look at the Carcharodontosaurids, 
their brains are really small compared to their body size. So when you when you compare them to like the dromaeosaurs and the and the tyrannosaurs, they're small in comparison, and basically they don't really have that big of a cerebrum, the part of the brain in terms of that is actually involved with cord with uh, cognitive thinking. So pretty much, Carcharodontosaurids basically used instinct a little bit more than uh, intellect. And so Carcharodontosaurids, like Carcharodontosaurus, uh, basically Carcharodontosaurus was actually uh, originally discovered um, during either World War One or World War II. Uh, basically, German scientists were actually exploring uh, Northern Africa, pretty much like Morocco and Egypt, and basically they found teeth of of Carcharodontosaurus, and so that was when it was originally discovered. But then when World War II happened, you had the bombing in Munich where the Allied forces actually bombed uh, Nazi headquarters. Uh, basically, uh, the, one of the Nazi headquarters in Munich was right next to the Natural History Museum, and basically. Uh, the Natural History Museum was destroyed, and basically uh, some of the key fo fossil finds in northern Africa were destroyed. And so basically, Carcharodontosaurus was completely forgotten uh, for many, many years. But it wasn't until uh, Paul Serino uh, from the University of Chicago, who actually has gone to Africa numerous times, and it wasn't until the, either the late 80s or the early, early 90s, it was when he actually uh, rediscovered uh, Carcharodontosaurus basically found a good skull, basically not complete, but even though a good a good amount of the skull, and basically he actually did a reconstruction of it, and you can see Carcharodontosaurus uh, skull, you can see the Carcharodontosaurus skull in the Ultimate Dinosaurs exhibit uh, that is originally in Ontario, but also you can actually see it if it actually um, is around in the area of where it might be traveling uh, as, as a traveling exhibit and you can see this Carcharodontosaurus skull it is huge uh, I was really impressed with it I th I thought that maybe it could have been a capable predator in its own right basically with the blade like teeth that it has and I think it probably was a successful predator for a good amount of time now the extinction of Carcharodontosaurus, of course, is probably is because uh, changing of the climate pretty much actually happened. And so ch when the climate changed, uh, that's when uh, newer dinosaurs started to come in, basically, in terms of, like, di some of the dinosaurs were actually getting smaller, uh, basically, because in the Cretaceous, it was cooler in the Cretaceous than it was in the Jurassic. And so that's when he had l rising sea levels. Uh, happening as well, and that's when Spinosaurus actually got extinct uh, because it couldn't adapt to the new change, and also uh, Carcharodontosaurus, with its uh, probably its uh, its territories were actually flooded uh, due to the fact that the rising sea levels, and you have the rising rivers and the rising lakes, and so pretty much um, it just basically couldn't adapt to the new changes, and also sort and its favorite prey source sauropods uh, were in were pretty much in decline the titanosaurs were actually in decline uh, at, at the, after that point so that was pretty much uh, uh, how that actually how Carcharodontosaurus actually kind of actually became extinct and the second dinosaur what we're going to talk about is is a kind of a well-known tyrannosaur and that is Tarbosaurus now, even though this is a model of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and basically, I'm actually going to use this as a Tarbosaurus, since uh, since uh, Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex are actually very, very similar. Um, there is some speculation that, but there, but there is evidence to say that Tarbosaurus Batar is actually Tyrannosaurus Batar, because Tyrannosaurus Batar was named first, then Tarbosaurus Batar came in later. But I mean, what can you do? I still say it's Tarbosaurus. Now, Tarbosaurus in Latin means terrifying lizard, or even though sometimes I've seen in books it's called alarming lizard. 
uh, fossils are found in Asia, basically in China and Mongolia. Uh, Lake Cretaceous, 70 to 65 million years ago. Approximately 40 feet long, probably weighed 5 tons. And of course, it's a carnivore. And characteristics of Tarbosaurus, of course, is basically like all characteristics with Tyrannosaurus big head, small arms, powerful legs, tail, and pretty much good senses. And so, pretty, pretty much, uh, Tyrannosaurus, like Tarbosaurus, had really good uh, sense of smell, sense of sight, and also good sense of hearing. And so these dinosaurs were actually kind of pretty, pretty intel. Were kind, of, kind of had a really good brain uh, for uh, their body size, and not, not really like say Dromaeosaurus did, but pretty much, um, pretty much uh, just uh, basically average, but even though higher than average, kind of like say in terms of dinosaurs. And of course, with Tarbosaurus, there are some differences between. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. One thing is that uh, the skull is not expanded in the back, so basically you don't you don't really see that much of an expansion in the back of the skull. And reasons why is because you see it probably didn't really have that much of musculature like Tyrannosaurus Rex did for bite force. Even though Tarbosaurus could actually crunch bone, it probably could crunch bone. And when you look at the teeth of Tarbosaurus, here's a Tarbosaurus tooth. Now it does have the characteristics of Tyrannosaurus, basically kind of kind of a thick tooth, uh, capable and very strong, capable of uh, crunching up bone. But when you look at this tooth, you actually see that it's actually not as thick as a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and probably it's because it actually hunted down different prey. And when you hunt down different prey than Tyrannosaurus Rex, that means you don't need to actually have a very powerful bite force to actually kill them to kill those animals so basically sauropods were actually on this were on the menu uh, for Tarbosaurus but also it actually did hunt uh, some of the Asian uh, hadrosaurs and and some of the ceratopsians that were actually around in there but the ceratopsians at that time were very small so pretty much they actually just probably the juveniles just ate them ate the smaller ceratopsians a little bit and then probably adults would probably eat them like as a as a good snack now with Tarbosaurus it probably was a little bit faster than Tyrannosaurus Rex considering that it's a lighter weight uh, type of uh, Tyrannosaur compared uh, compared to Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex is the heavier uh, Tyrannosaur and of course with uh, and another difference with Tarbosaurus compared to Tyrannosaurus Rex, the arms are smaller than Tyrannosaurus Rex. So would you, that would actually indicate that Tarbosaurus didn't use its arms a lot. So Tyrannosaurus Rex probably did use its arms a little bit more than Tarbosaurus. So Tarbosaurus probably uh, didn't use them as much. And when you actually com and we actually kind of look at the other two di look at the differences between those two these two dinosaurs uh tarbosaurus is probably a little tarbosaurus is a little bit more gracile probably faster than tyrannosaurus rex probably reaching speeds of up to 25 miles per hour as an adult whereas tyrannosaurus rex would actually be between 15 and 25 miles per hour so a little bit slower and of course with Tarbosaurus and the, and the great fossil find uh, basically in Mongolia where you have multiple um, Tarbosaurus specimens in one layer and some some of the other layers as well but even though that's going to be a really good it has to be a lot of evidence to support this is probably evidence of a social of a social gathering right there and that probably is maybe good evidence to support that they probably live together in family groups Pretty much like a pack, and so when I do, I think that Tyrannosaurs and other large carnivorous dinosaurs hunted in packs. Absolutely, I think that there's a there's a really good chance of that because you see, if you're hunting down uh, dinosaurs that actually lived in herds or have really strong defenses, you need to actually you need a cooperative group in order to actually uh, break up the herd and to actually get to get the weakest link of the herd and take it down. And that's probably why 
uh, you see like uh, like the fossil finds like of the Displetosaurus uh, uh, quarry where it's actually in um, Wyoming where they found three uh, Displetosauruses found together. You also had the Sioux quarry uh, where basically four Tyrannosaurus rexes were in the same were in the same layer. And also you actually have the Albertosaurus uh, bone bed in Alberta in Dinosaur Provincial Park that actually has pretty much 12 uh, Albertosaurus specimens in one in one layer and that probably is a good indication of a social behavior and so that to me shows that it has a social behavior and like with Tyrannosaurus, uh, Torbosaurus uh, did actually now with the not so much of expanding of the skull and that would mean that the eyesight would actually be it didn't have that much of depth perception so pretty much had less depth perception than Tyrannosaurus Rex and some other Tyrannosaurus but even though it did actually have a good sense of sight and so pretty much a really successful predator in its own right and of course extinction basically it actually died out um, pretty much at the end of the Cretaceous when pretty much uh, an asteroid uh, col actually collided in the Gulf of Mexico and pretty much uh, created this massive crater it created like this numerous events uh, basically shock waves earthquakes uh, tsunamis uh, you have the you have the debris falling back down to earth from the impact of the crater uh, and, and also blocking out the Sun so pretty much uh, Tarbosaurus probably was successful for a short period of time after the events occurred but it probably didn't live very long it probably actually just lived uh, probably maybe a hundred to a thousand years after the extinction and that was probably it and of course and would do I think that possibly like Tarbosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Displetosaurus, and Albertosaurus or any other the large Tyrannosaurus did they have feathers? I think there is a good chance considering that uh, you actually have fossil finds like deep die long uh, Guan Long and U Tyrannus that are all Tyrannosaurs have shown features of feather impressions mainly primitive uh, features not really spectacular like uh, like Microraptor uh, but even though it actually it probably would have had like a downy covering now I would think Tarbosaurus probably did have just a, a limited amount probably just like on the back and on parts of the on the back and on the tail a little bit on the head and probably also on the arms and also males would have been brightly colored and of course Tarbosaurus is one of my favorite Tyrannosaurus it's actually my third favorite Tyrannosaur uh, second is actually Albertosaurus and then the other and then of course my all-time favorite dinosaur and number one Tyrannosaur is Tyrannosaurus Rex all right, that's it for now. And the next week will actually be an answer questions episode. So if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can go on the Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions in the comment section on any Facebook post. But remember, keep your questions short and to the point. And also, uh, make sure to leave your uh, first name and uh, the city state, and city, state, or country of where you're from. That way I know where it's coming from. And also you can follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. At CSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. Follow me there and I actually post pretty cool stuff on on Twitter. Uh, you can also and also take care of people around you. And also for younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.